Hello, you're watching Tell It Like It Is, and my name is Kathy Benick. Today we're going to once again take a look at the election for the office of county attorney, Hillsborough County attorney that is, and my guest right now is Dennis Hogan, who is the incumbent Hillsborough County attorney and the Republican nominee in this year's final election. He first became the county attorney in 2010. Dennis has been an attorney in private practice for the past 10 years after previous career in the insurance industry, and his past political involvements include being a delegate at the last state constitutional convention in 1984, serving a term in the New Hampshire House of Representatives, serving on the Nashua Board of Education, and running for the state Senate in 2006. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time right now because time is short and valuable. Uh, so going back over Dennis's biography, but what I'll ask you to do is to take a look at the previous show that we did together. All you have to do is go to the BCTV website at www.bedfordtv.com, click on today's schedule for channel 16, and in the upper left you'll see a little search box, type in Tell It Like It Is. A list of shows will come up and pick the one titled Race to County Attorney with guest Dennis Hogan. So, with no further ado, Dennis, delighted to have you back. Great. It's good to see you Thank again. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. No, well, it's great to have you. And here you are at the end, almost, just a few more days till the campaign winds up once and for all. That's so, right. So, yeah. how's it been going? You enjoying campaigning? It's been going campaigning? very well. Well, yeah. you know, I, I love the opportunity to go out and meet people and tell them, you know, that I am in an executive position and I'm doing yep. a great job in an executive, in an, an executive position. So, yeah. it's a great opportunity. And you're not tired of the bean suppers and all that good stuff yet? Uh, no, no. no. Sometimes I have to pass up on certain food, but um, you know, <laughs> keep keep my weight where it is. But uh, I'm all I'm all right. Yeah, a lot of candidates kind of get a little porky there at the end because they're <laughs> noshing here, there, and everywhere. Well, I guess the uh, the viewers will have to decide for themselves whether <laughs> that's the case with me. <laughs> uh, well, now you've been in office since January 2011. Right. So how has the office of Hillsborough County Attorney changed since you took it over? Well, I guess I think of a few things. Um, it's physical. physical. Um, there's this sort of professionalism I brought to it, and there's also the organization. By physical, I mean when I got there, it was actually literally more messy. And, and by asking, you know, what's this doing here, what's that doing here, um, we sort of encouraged the, um, the people in, in the office to get more um, more tight in terms of where things are and where they belong and how, you know, whether the things are in the place that they should be. Mm -hmm. And that's important in, a, in an office that well, goes yeah. by files. So there were some files that were just a, a mess. And, and even when, you know, it was necessary for me to get down and do something physical, I would lift some boxes and move things around to show how important I actually thought it was. And, you know, it's like Disney. Disney's so clean and mm -hmm. so well organized. Mm -hmm. And we're all about being organized. So I've stayed organized or stayed, kept the office and made it, I think, more uh, physically organized, and then how I've organized it in terms of the people and what they do. I've taken on to myself all the things that um, the prosecutors don't need to prosecute their files, not, don't need to be doing is what I mean. Mm -hmm. So I take on anybody who wants to meet with us, um, any um, any organizations, you know, and there's so many like uh, mm -hmm. Weed and Seed in, in Manchester who want a presence from our office. Mm -hmm. I go there. Um, in the uh, mental uh, health uh, community council um, um, initiative that we have, t it, that's more in the in the district court, but we have a presence there too. Mm -hmm. I go to that and make sure that I understand it and bring it back. And there's many other things as well. Um, and then there's the professionalism. You know, I didn't. I had the opportunity coming in because I didn't have anybody in my campaign who was an attorney who was helping me, mm -hmm. right? Who expected a job after I won. Mm -hmm. I had the opportunity to just stay with complete professionalism and just hire the people who are going to be best at the job. And that's a, that's a change from uh, the past administration. So it those is, are the ways, yeah. oh yeah, those, those are the ways that, they, that it has changed, and I think uh, for the better. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, I'm quite convinced that the, the voters will think it's, those things are for the better as well. And, you know, even just the, the fact you brought up the organizational kind of stuff, I mean, we all know just from our own households or, or personal offices that, when you need a piece of paper or something like that and you can't find it, you're right. kind of frantically looking right. for it. And there's and this big mess of paper over there. Yeah, you go, is yeah. it in there? Yeah. And so we're getting to the point, you know, we've worked, you know, slicing yeah. the salami, so to speak, because you don't want to try to eat, eat the whole salami all at once. That's a managerial um, book that I read. You know, slicing the salami, getting it little by little so that we're mm -hmm. at the point where, you know, the papers are where they're supposed to be, mm -hmm. the, you know, the files are in the file rooms are clean and, the, you know, the big file 
uh, boxes are where they're supposed mm -hmm. to be. Yeah, yeah that's important sure. um, because I mean, when an attorney is rushing off to a trial or whatever, you got to have it all with you. I right, mean, right. cases can be won or lost sometimes just by something that you really needed to have there, and if it's lost forever, right. And I'm sure there's never. Well, I. I I shudder to think that there was a case where somebody didn't have what they needed as they were going to trial because you do a lot of preparation oh, for trial. Oh, of course, yeah. But it's in, but it's in terms of h time management. Mm -hmm. You know, how much time does it take to, when somebody says, "Oh, I need that old piece of paper," mm -hmm. and then going and finding that? And if it, everything isn't organized as it should be, and mm -hmm. as we're getting to, then how much time is that going to take? And then that becomes a budget issue. Well, mm -hmm. I have all this work these people need to do, and I got to go to the budget people and say, "I need this money." Well, you know, if we if we're better organized, can we save a little money because we don't need people running around uh, doing the wrong things? So sure, some of that must come from your background in the insurance industry, because well, I obviously, was, I mean, insurance people keep track of every yes, little thing. A, your whole life history with that's them. That's a very such. organized yeah. um, I enterprise as well. You, you know, everything is about do we have it? Yeah. What does it say? Yeah. And then doing something about it. Right? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Now, you did not have previous experience working with the Office of the Hillsborough County Attorney when you were sure. elected to head it. Right. So, how did you prepare yourself for the job? And is it unusual for a person to come into yeah. that job um, who previously had not worked? Well, first, for? let me tell you how I prepared. I mean, even before I ran, I went and sat down with uh, a Hillsborough County attorney, Jim Reams, who, had a, who has a county that's a similar size, mm -hmm. Rockingham, which is actually smaller. But he um, explains what he does and you know, so what I should be expecting in the job. And one of the important things I thought that he told me was that he doesn't go to, into trial. He doesn't take files himself and, and work them. He mm -hmm. takes, remains the administrator, the leader of the office, and mm -hmm. he delegates all work in you know, prosecution to somebody mm -hmm. else. Uh, it allows him to focus on what he's doing and it allows them to focus on what they're doing. Now, I have taken a few files mm -hmm. because I wanted to, you know, being new to the organization, I wanted mm -hmm. to see it from both my perspective on the top and from the perspective sure. of what everybody's doing down sure. there. But I haven't taken a significant amount because I've taken his advice. Um, then, once I was, the election happened in December, I spent my own money to go to San Francisco, which isn't so bad, but I spent my own <laughs> money to go to... You have to go somewhere. That's a good place <laughs> to go. It was a very nice place. <laughs> But it was to do a con to do a conference, not just the sightsee. Although I rode my bike in the morning. Nice. Before it's the a conference, beautiful city, yeah. I, I rented a bicycle and rode. See how far. Ah, it's ride. a great it's city. Great exercise too. But anyway, I'm, I digress, right? Um, the um, we, I you know studied what it uh, what it is to be a, you know, a, mm -hmm. a, a DA, which is what they call it everywhere else. And I found in th being there that I met other people. Uh, one of them right down in Massachusetts, a Democrat who was elected to the position right from private practice. He had never been in the, in the office. Yeah, mm -hmm. same thing. Um, they, you definitely can do it. And there's a one in, in New Jersey who uh, was appointed by the governor. So he didn't even run for the office. Really? Right? Yeah, he w but he was appointed from private practice. So naturally, I mean, if people think about it for a second, they know that you can go from one leadership position to another leadership position. And that's mm -hmm. exactly what I did. I have leadership experience from uh, the school board, from when I was in law school leading county, uh, mm -hmm. county attorneys, leading a future attorneys in mm -hmm. our, you know, student government, and, um, and then at Allstate when I um, was able to do a little bit of leadership uh, and management experience when I went on catastrophe duty. So, so I was going from management management to another management position, and, mm -hmm. and people know that that can happen. Look at Ford. Ford has got a guy who didn't work his way up from, uh, from the bottom of Ford. He's not even the Ford family. He came from Boeing as a leader, and now mm -hmm. he works at Ford as a leader. And so it's totally a different industry. It's a different industry, yeah. but but I'm sure he finds the similarities. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it, it, it is industry. You know, mm -hmm. and so I had yeah. to, I had to find yeah. the similarities of what I had to find the similarities of what I had done before and, and what I'm doing now. And I found that there are a lot of things. I mean, one of the one of the first things was personnel. I mean, we deal with personnel issues. Boy, did I get an education at the at the school department in Nashville about personnel. We had a big brouhaha with our um, uh, uh, superintendent, mm -hmm. and I, you know, I was not the leader of the uh, the um, the board at that point. But I, so I was able to just sit back and watch it and see how it was done. And boy, I learned a lot of lessons and how not to do something mm -hmm. from that. And mm -hmm. I did not. You know, I made sure not to do those same things when I um, was starting to deal with personnel issues that were a little sticky. Do you think that um, prosecutors feel as though you can understand, you know, whatever issues they might be having where you yourself are a prosecutor? 
Yeah, I think, I mean, I was... Because, I, I mean, you would have been on the other side, I did right? some defense, defense work. Side, so, yeah, yeah I, so I understand yeah. what, you know, what we're working towards and, and what the issues are. And obviously there are, there are issues I have learned since being there because they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're special to the, um, the prosecution side of it. And there are issues that, you know, even somebody who's a prosecutor now has no idea that I deal with and, and what I'm dealing with as the county attorney. So... Mm. Um, yeah, well, that's true too. Yeah, sure. As yeah. A, you know, the, in the leadership part of it, you, do, you deal with a lot of things that you wouldn't deal with as a prosecutor. So, do you think there was any weakness that you had coming into the job, not having worked in the, uh, the you know the prosecutor's office before? Um, I wouldn't say it was a weakness. It was just you know a difference. Um, you know, I came with all the things that I that I was doing instead of being there, being in private practice. You know, understanding um, you know what's going on in, in the non-government world mm -hmm. um, because uh, that's, you know it's a different perspective when you when you have um, that uh, government check coming each mm -hmm. week because you have a consistent employment compared to you know people who are you know outside mm -hmm. and want to come in and so I was able to apply what I knew in uh, dealing with personnel issues. Mm. Yeah. yeah I can see that that would but it, it still must have been an interesting change of pace for oh, you, definitely. no matter how you cut it. Oh, yeah. When I came on, I mean, I was certainly very fascinated by yeah. being able to work with so many bright people mm -hmm. and uh, work out solutions as a group as opposed mm -hmm. to, you know, when I was by myself as, mm -hmm. uh, in private practice and had to rely basically on what I, what I thought myself, which is, you know, can be... T can be difficult. <laughs> you know, you have to call somebody in another office yeah, and they kind of bounce yeah. something off yeah. you and, you know, yeah. so... It's, it's definitely something I very much like to. And I, I would think too that in a sticky kind of case, that probably a lot of people weigh in with their opinions. Yes. Yeah. And you'll f and we'll find that um, you know people bring a case they're not sure sure about to case conferencing and talk about, and and generally we come to a consensus and people say yeah yeah that's what we should do and we agree. But th there are those cases that don't get consensus and it's like, mm -hmm. okay, what are we going to do? That some people think we should do this, some people think we should do that. And those are the ones that rise to the top, you know, where I am and I mm -hmm. have to sometimes make decisions. Although, frankly, not that often that there's a decision like that have to be made. Yeah, how does that work? I mean, if you, as county attorney, obviously you're the boss of the office. Yeah. So, I mean, do you have the, uh, I'm assuming you do, you would have the ability to say, I really don't like the, the tack you're going to take with this, and this is how I want you to do it? Yeah. You can do that? I have the ability to muck the whole thing up. <laughs> <laughs> and which is why I tell people, you know I'm doing a good job because you haven't read anything about me in the newspaper. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because I could go that in That is kind of a stand in, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, so I, my managerial style is, is to be somewhat hands-off, but really, in my the, my way of thinking, it's including everybody in the mm -hmm. in things. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, those you take your file, and if if it's a if it's a routine thing, then you, you go ahead and do it, and you know, you know, nobody hears about it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but if it's something difficult, you bring it to the the group, and we all think about it, and we all talk about it. And um, so, you know, I don't I don't hear a case at case conferencing and say, well, this is how I want it to be mm -hmm. done. Go do it this way and have everybody sit there silently <laughs> and not give their great advice. <laughs> yeah, because what's the sense of using just my intellect yeah. if I have the intellect of all those people? Well, and I mean, it. truth be told, and no insult intended, but um, lawyers aren't generally known as kind of the uh, quiet, withdrawn type. Well, and you, and, you know, and then also not known for small egos, it, quite they're honestly. They're not known so. for it. That's because the, the, the loud ones probably are known, more known. Oh, tell me a lawyer that doesn't have a giant ego. Come on, find one. Well, see, you know, there's people in my... Uh, there ah, are people, I don't there believe are people you. that I went to law school with <laughs> that are of all different type of personality. Yeah, that's, but you have to have an I ego to do that kind of work. I think you have to get confident to do it, yes. Yeah, you have to have an ego to do that kind of work. Okay. See, I'm going <laughs> to stick to my guns on this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, if you are not reelected as Hillsborough County Attorney, how do you think things would change, or do you think they change at all? Well, you know, the, my opponent claimed that she would uh, take on more files and start working them herself, which would mean that you mean in trial? Yeah, yeah taking and handling the cases as I described. I, I took everything from the prosecutors that I thought that they shouldn't be doing, so they can handle the prosecution just that. Mm -hmm. um, she's saying that she's going to take on for herself prosecutions, which means the work that I'm doing now, have taken away from it, has to then go back out to them. So I think uh, taking um, that, I think, you know, it just mix it up that way. That's assuming that it can be done. 
um, that way. But you know, that's what I would, have, uh, you know, assume would have to happen. Um, I don't think that someone could take on any more work than I do. I mean, I work more than five uh, five days a week. So, um, and then what's the other? Um, uh, I think that. Um, well, I couldn't think of the other one right now, so you have to no, ask the other question. <laughs> there was something else in my head, but yeah, no, yeah. I know, I know. When it, well, I do that all the time when I'm conversing with everybody, even yeah. the cat. You know, I have to yeah. kind of come back and oh, do a well, little yeah. follow-up. Thank you. Now I remembered the cat. Um, no, no, no. <laughs> I remembered what it was. I just had to, I just needed the water. So, I mean, my opponent has said that she would um, complain louder about mm. or fight more for you know not having budget cuts in our office. Now, there wasn't anything. Either one of us could have done about the budget cuts that we had. They were just coming, but presumably you'd take some time to do that fighting, to do that complaining, mm -hmm. and so um, you know that's uh, the, the the focus is going to be taken away as it was. You know, my focus was okay. Now I've got this budget problem. How am I going to handle it? So that's instead of someone who's going to handle the budget that's given to them. You know, once it's yeah, I've ad I advocated for money mm -hmm. and getting the proper amount of money, but you know I was given less, and so I dealt with that. So we're gonna have somebody instead who's gonna complain more loudly about that, and you know, sometimes directors will play a trick, um, and I'm sure the people you know who listen have seen you know the case of s the legislative body says you can only have this much money, and then the director goes, oh, you know something really bad is gonna happen. You're not gonna be able to do this particular thing. Well, you know, I didn't play those kind of games, and so. Um, you know, if the fight is going to be done like that, that would be a change, and uh, so something I certainly don't want to do. I just want to, you know, advocate for what I want to advocate. If I get it, great, and I'll do it, do with it what I can. And if I get less, I'm going to manage to figure out a way to do it with that amount less. And so I think people who are, are very fiscally conscious appreciate that way of dealing mm -hmm. th with things as a director. Now, now that you you know you've had the job a couple of years, you've probably met every other county attorney in the yeah. state, I would assume, right? Sure. Yeah. And how do you feel? Do they handle things kind of in the same manner as you, or well, are some no. of them more apt to jump into a trial? None of them or? are the same because really? of the sizes of the counties. Well, that yeah, that's a it, fair. It, it's called county attorney, yeah. but in fact, there's only one county yeah. attorney who has a boss, uh, uh, yeah. A Nashua and a Manchester size city mm -hmm. in them. Yeah. That's me. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So I have to do my things very different from the the county attorney in Coos who doesn't have. Mm -hmm. to the, is there a big town in Coos? Uh, Berlin or something? No, <laughs> I don't really, know. No. But um, so yeah, very different. Um, so the others, yes, they all other than um, Rockingham, they do. They take the files in and they do things very differently. Rockingham, I've um, he's been there a long time and I've modeled myself after uh, what he's doing. And of course, some of the smaller counties, just because they are small, the populations are, are so much tinier compared to oh, yeah. Manchester and Nashua yeah. combined. Right. Just their incidence of trials and so on wouldn't be as high. Right. I mean, Hillsborough County has 2,200 plus or minus 100 cases per year. It's a lot. That is a lot. Yeah. 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 And then I'm sure some come back too, right? Um, on occasion, they come back for different things. Sure, appeals I mean, or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that that adds to the work. So we we have 20 attorneys that are managing with 20 staff. There are there are county attorney offices that have three, seven mm. um, assistant county attorneys. Yeah, big difference. Yeah. yeah. yeah so it's huge, hugely mm -hmm. different. Now, going on the assumption you're going to be reelected. Thank you. Um, <laughs> you. You probably have in your mind various plans that you now having fulfilled the term and, yeah. and you know have really gotten the lay of the land and such and seen what worked for you as a manager as well as what worked for your staff yeah. do you have new plans now that that you're planning to well generally kick off once generally January certainly comes? I intend to be the same I mean I intend to be, keep it professional um, I don't have anybody on helping me now who's an attorney who's waiting for a job um, there's nobody on in in the staff you know that is you know Looking to get favor because they're helping me in my campaign. I've kept I've kept the two very separate, so mm -hmm. I'm going to continue that sort of thing. Um, looking ahead, I want to help uh, the court foster a drug court because there's a lot of the problems in both Nashville and Manchester, and coming out spilling out into the towns is a result of people's drug addictions. So other jurisdictions have um, found a way to um, get people off drugs by mm -hmm. putting them in this, through this drug court and really making them work at getting off drugs. So I, we're working on that, and that may take uh, the rest of the next term. So the court would be totally related to drug-related offenses? Yeah, a good, that that person, if oh. a person were arrested, um, they would uh, get some sort of um, 
recommendation that they mm -hmm. be put in this court. And if everybody agreed, that's the way they would do it. They would, the uh, violation of mm -hmm. the law would be held over their head. You know, whatever sentence they might get mm -hmm. gets held over their head. And then the team works together. Mm -hmm. And the person has to come in, sometimes weekly, to show that they're not back on drugs, to show that they're um, making the progress that needs to be made. And one of the things that, that studies have shown is that a person is more likely to stay, um, to n not be, re not recidivate if they have a job, have a good attitude toward working in, in general, mm -hmm. have a family that's not doing bad things like over drinking and, mm -hmm. and taking drugs. And uh, so if we can get those people, you know, sort of get them in that straight and narrow path, um, they, they will get off the drugs and then hopefully, and it's, it's worked apparently in other jurisdictions, hopefully they won't be then those people in the future that are burglarizing people's houses, stealing the jewelry, stealing the copper mm -hmm. pipes, that sort of mm -hmm. thing. So if, if the impact in Hillsborough County is, is, is proportional to what it was in the other jurisdictions, we're talking about a lot of cases that we might, might not have. Oh, that's true, yeah. yeah. Now, yeah, this is by no means a scientific uh, study type mm -hmm. related question or, or observation, but when I was in Massachusetts, it seemed like a lot of the prosecutors tended to be relatively new lawyers, young lawyers, mm -hmm. and and they would kind of get their foothold yep. um, at trial work, that kind of thing, serving right. in that capacity, right. and then after a couple of years would move on, right. you know, to go into private practice or, or whatever they decided to do. Is that the same in New Hampshire? Do you, do you have like a continuous revolving door or do you see more and more people kind of commit to it as, as a career? I would say I think it was that way. Mm -hmm. I think the bad economy has, ch has sort of made people take pause mm -hmm. and about whether they want to go out into the private sector and, um, and try their hand at that. So, but it, it, within a month of when I arrived, there was um, one of our uh, first assistants actually left um, f to get to make more money in the private sector, so he showed that it can happen. But for some reason, I'm not seeing too much of that with with others. Um, so we'll see. You think that'd be a tough transition for somebody? Uh, no, it's no, it's actually not. I mean, th it is great experience to do all that trial work, and um, then you can really should be able to sell it to any um, any attorneys. But at this point, right now, really they can only sell it to um, defense you know, mm. the defense mm. bar and getting a job with somebody else who's doing criminal defense work. Whereas I think if the economy were growing, they'd be able to go out and say, well, I can do a, mm -hmm. uh, any complicated case. Mm -hmm. Now, conversely, do you see in New Hampshire that more folks come in as a prosecutor having had previous legal experience and then deciding to well, make that kind of a career Unfortunately, change? we can't afford people who have a lot of experience well, to come yeah, in. Well, that's your when I, when, when yeah. I was Yeah, when I was looking to replace people, I had to be thinking about that 8% reduction uh, mm. so we didn't raise taxes on, on people. And um, so that 8% reduction required me to look at people who are newer. Yeah, mm. and, and, and f but I think the economy sent very good people to me. In other mm -hmm. words, there, there were not those other options that they had that mm -hmm. took very, very good people and made them go somewhere else. They were, they were very willing to come and work for me. So I managed to pick up some very good uh, young prosecutors. Sure. And, and I mean, you know, truth be told, no matter what stage of their career they're in, whether they're starting out or been around a while, it does take kind of a, a commitment to do that kind of work. It's not for everybody. Right. Oh, because, you know, you're seeing kind of the, the worst of society, stay, you know? Yeah. But the people who stay really like it. They really like the work. Yeah. Um, yeah. They like what it, uh, how they feel about doing the work. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's the biggest draw to it. Not so much the, the money that's going to be made, but the, um, the, the feeling of, of, of improving the world that they get. Now, this, this may seem like an off-the-wall question, but is there ever any consideration given by anybody that they need to be concerned about their own personal safety because of the type of folks they're seeing every day in the courthouse. We, we do discuss that. Yeah, no question about it. I mean, there's been, it's not unheard of for somebody to get hurt in uh, in our line of work, mm. and so um, it's something that concerns us, and uh, we take some precautions for it. Yeah, and because and I in mean, my mind, probably not enough, but yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, I would think there I are a few folks who get locked up who, because they can't accept responsibility for themselves, blame it all on who helped them get there. Yeah. You know? I, I imagine. I, yeah. I can't get into the minds no, of, of, course of, uh, yeah. of the, those people. But uh, um, it has happened that prosecutors have been hurt in the past. I think in the recent past for New Hampshire, it's been more the um, 
the policeman on the street because it's mm -hmm. more immediate mm -hmm. um, and the person who's being arrested is more of a just desperate si situation at mm -hmm. that point. So those are the people who have been hurt, but um, it's not unheard of that it could happen and uh, it concerns us. Mm. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, today especially, you have to be. Yeah. With all the craziness going yeah. on. Well, we are actually running out of time, oh. believe it or not. Wow. Um, so what I'd like you to do is that camera right over there will zero right in on you. All right. And well, now is your chance to... Remember the things that we didn't talk about yes, that I wanted to say. Yes, and now's your chance to say to those voters <laughs> who are watching this, the election's in a couple of weeks, and I need your vote because. Yeah. Okay. So go for it. Well, again, in case you just tuned in, um, hi, I'm Dennis Hogan. I'm the Hillsborough County Attorney. And as you might have heard, I have uh, a lot of experience uh, with leadership. And the Hillsborough County Attorney's Office is um, a big office, and it requires uh, the leadership experience that I bring to it. Um, and I managed to establish a culture where people who are great at prosecution want to come and work. And at the same time, um, and probably because of the people I've managed to uh, bring in to work with us, we've worked under an 8% reduction in our budget. So we've done the job um, in, a, in a, an effective way, and we've done it for 8% less. And for anyone to say that we're not doing a good job, I think, uh, it, you know, put them to their proofs. Uh, what I say is, if I hadn't been do doing a good job all this time, you would have read about it in the paper already. And now that it's the campaign season, people may come up with ideas uh, for something that, that this wasn't right or that wasn't right. But if you look at it deeply, I think you'll just find that it's uh, partisan politics and um, you can dismiss those uh, complaints as just that. So I'd appreciate you um, letting me continue as your county attorney. Um, it's a job I have certainly enjoyed and I think I'm doing a good job for you. So please uh, get out there November 6th and uh, cast your ballot for Dennis Hogan to remain as your county attorney. Thank you very much. Oh, and uh, check out my website. Um, we have a great video on dchoganlaw.com uh, there's a fantastic video of people, you know, it's one thing for me to tell you I'm doing a great job, but we have some uh, testimonials that you can check out and um, you'll, you'll be impressed, I think. Thank you very much. That was good. You know, you threw that in because if you did, I would have put it in. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah great. <laughs> yeah, you never know uh, hey. what to say after we've just chatted for all this time. No, and then what I, am no. I going to say no, to the camera? But well, no. I mean, it's important. It it's like anything else. If you don't ask somebody for the vote, they might not give it to you. Right, right. Dennis, appreciate it was good to see time. you again, and best of luck right, in the you. remaining weeks of the campaign. And one way or another, I'm sure I'll have you back here. Okay, thank you All very right. much. I'm happy to That's come right. anytime. Delighted to have you. Thank right. you for coming. Right. Well, again, here we are at the end of yet another show as we're coming in closer and closer to the final election. And, you know, the moral of this story is definitely make yourselves out there uh, to vote and pick your candidates. You're getting to hear them all and see them all and hear what they have to say. And Dennis Gate told you like it is from his perspective, and so you need to listen. And um, this is what this show is all about, getting people to tell it like it is. So thanks for watching, and until next time, bye-bye.